Hello there and welcome to this series of videos going through the content of A Level Further Maths. Here we're looking at the first of our videos on vectors and in this video we're going to look at an introduction to vector lines. So we can answer questions from exercise 9a. So first of all, how can we represent a vector uh, line? Um, well in two dimensions we've got this y equals mx plus c construction and you've all seen that before uh, where the y coordinate is calculated by some multiple of your x coordinate add on c. So effectively c is where you start and m is the rate at which you change as you change your variable x. And pretty much the same idea works in three dimensions where we've got a position vector, a starting position vector, effectively the same as c in your two dimensions, and then a direction vector which is kind of the same as your gradient in your mx plus c. So think of it as starting position plus Lambda. Now, lambda is effectively our x variable here. That's the thing that can change, and as that changes, we move along our line. And then b is the is the uh, direction that we're going to change from our starting position of a. So this is going to be in three dimensions, and in three dimensions, the axes kind of look like this, where we've got x going from left to right, y going along the base here. So if you can imagine, you're looking down on a sheet of paper here, you've got x going upwards and, um, so y going upwards and x going to the right, and then z, the z-axis is coming upwards like that, okay? And this is how the equation of a line in three dimensions is going to look. It's going to travel um, some, some amount to the right, some amount up and down, and then some amount uh, in and out as well, okay? So think of a um, the equation of a line in three dimensions as a your starting position and b your direction vector the rate at which you change your coordinates by as lambda changes okay so for example y equals 2 over 3x plus 1 1 is your starting position and we're changing by a rate of 2 over 3 for every x we go to the right by 1 and for example, here we're starting at uh, position 2, 3, minus 1, so that's this position down here. And we're changing at a rate of minus 2, minus 3, 1, um, as lambda changes here. And as you could tell from this uh, vector here, as lambda equals 1, um, our line is going to go through the point to 0, 0, 0. Okay, so R represents any position along this line, so effectively the line. Uh, the first vector is the starting position, the last vector where that's uh, multiplied by lambda is the direction vector, and the lambda value is the scalar quantity, and as that value changes we move up and down our line. Okay, So overall this tells us that any point on the line is equal to the position vector plus a multiple of the direction vector. And as I said before, if lambda is 1, then we go to the position 0, 0, 0. If lambda was 3, for example, then we'd plug in 3, and we'd do 2 plus 3 times minus 2, so that would be minus 6. Add 2 gives you minus 4, and we can do that for the rest of the coordinates as well. So that's how we can work out whether a coordinate is on the line or not, just by finding the value of lambda and seeing if it falls on that line or not. So let's have a go at answering a few questions uh, to do with this example of uh, the equation of a straight line being r equals a plus lambda b. Now generally when we write these down, we're going to write underlines uh, underneath the a and the b, but not the lambda. And what the underline does is it effectively notates for us bold handwriting um, that we can't really write um, it with a pencil or a pen. So we're going to write A or B as underlined when we have vectors. So find the, qu the question that we want to answer is find the equation of the straight line that passes through the point A which has a vector of 3 minus 5, 4. This is effectively the same as a starting coordinate. So this here could also have been written as 3 minus 5, 4 effectively as a starting coordinate and is parallel to the vector 7, 0, minus 3. Well, the general equation for a straight line in vectors is r equals a plus lambda b. So what we can then do is just replace our starting coordinate with 3 minus 5, 4, like we have here, and our direction vector is 7, 0, minus 3 with the b vector that's here. So that's effectively the equation of the line. So it's as straightforward as that. 
So that's our answer. There are multiple different ways that you could see this answer appear though. So you could see it as written as 3i from the first number at the top here being 3, minus 5j from the second number down being minus 5, and 4k from the 4 being the third number down. So ijk is effectively the top number, the middle number, and the bottom number as we go down our vector plus lambda lots of 7i from the top uh, part of our vector. We've got no j's, so we haven't written plus 0j, just don't need to write that. And then it's minus 3k uh, on the end there. And all of this is being times by lambda. And another way we could see this being written as well is if we were to expand the brackets and group the i components together. So in this case here, it would be 3 plus 7 lambda. So that's why we get this here. For the j components, the only bit for that is minus 5 times j. And then for the k components, we've got 4 minus 3 lambda when we expand out. So 4 minus 3 lambda times the k vector. So we could also see our answer written like this. Or written like this as well, where we've just put the two uh, vectors together here. So 3 plus 7 lambda minus 5 and 4 minus 3 lambda by putting the z components together. So multiple different ways that we could see our answer or see the question appear. You just have to be comfortable in turning it back into whichever form you prefer. I generally prefer this form here. So wherever I get a question that's written, for example, in i, j's and k's, I'd always rather prefer turn it back into column vectors with a lambda at the front of a column vector like that. OK, second question, then let's have a look at this one. Find a vector equation of the straight line that passes through the points a and b with coordinates 4, 5, minus 1 and 6, 3, 2. So what we need to do first, now in terms of r equals a plus lambda b, a is going to be easy. We can just use one of these two points here. But what we need to know is the direction vector um, or how we get from, for example, a to coordinate b. Now, generally, a good way of working out how you get from coordinate A to B is by doing coordinate B subtract coordinate A. So just reverse their order and then do the subtraction of one coordinate minus another. And that will calculate for you um, how you get from A to B. So if we calculate this, we can get 2 minus 2, 3. And let's look back at our coordinates here. If we look at the X component, we need to go up by 2 to get from 4 to 6. Great, so we've got a 2 there. From 5 to 3, we need to go down 2. So that would be down 2 like we've got here. And minus 1 up to 2, we're going to move up by 3. So that's why a 3 appears there. So it's a useful little strategy, this. If you want to go from coordinate A to coordinate B and find the direction to get from coordinate A to coordinate B, then do coordinate B subtract coordinate A. And now that we have the direction vector, we can now write our final answer in the form r equals a plus lambda b. Our starting position is going to be either one of these two vectors here or here, plus lambda times 2 minus 2, 3, the direction to get from one coordinate to another. And this way, both coordinates will appear on this line here. OK, so it's just R equals A plus lambda B. A is your starting point. B is your direction vector. And we could have used either of these two starting coordinates as well. So either this starting coordinate here or this starting coordinate here would have been absolutely fine. Uh, these will give the same line but with a different value of lambda for each point. So yeah, that's OK. OK, let's look at uh, another question here. The straight line L has the vector equation of this thing here. So if you can imagine in column notation, it'd be 2, 5, minus 3, plus lambda lots of 6, minus 2, 4. Um, show that another vector equation of L can be written like this. 8, 3, 1, uh, add lambda lots of 2, minus 1, sorry, 3, minus 1, 2. So we're showing that these vectors here are effectively the same line, just written in a different way. So what we can do first is check the position vector is on the line. So we need to check that this position vector here is on this line here. So let lambda equal 1. We've spotted here that if we let lambda equal 1, then the i's match up. So 6 plus 2 gives you 8. And we spot here that 8, 3, 1 is on this line 
on top here. So we know that for this line here, this starting position is going to fall along this vector here. So that's the first part in proving that this line here and this line here are equivalent lines. Okay, so we've got that that uh, starting position does lie on the um, line of this initial vector here. Uh, and we also need to check that the direction vectors are parallel. So how do we check that two vectors are parallel? Well, we check that one vector, one direction vector, is a scalar multiple of the other direction vector. Or in other words, this vector down here times by 2 will give you this vector here, which is absolutely fine. Just this vector here will travel twice as fast, effectively, as this vector here would. So it's still going to travel in exactly the same direction. It's just that the scalar multiple at the front of this one here only needs to be half as much as the scalar multiple in the second vector here. So given that this vector here lies on this line, and given that the direction is travelling in the same direction, then the two lines must be equivalent. OK. Right, so that's answering all the questions there. So your turn to have a go at these two questions here then. Pause the video and try these two questions out. All right then, so answering question 4a, find a vector equation of the line which passes through 2, 1, 9 and 4, minus 1, 8. Well, if we call this position a and this position b, then first of all, finding the direction that we use to get from position b, a to b is by doing 4, minus 1, 8, subtract 2, 1, 9. So if we now do that subtraction, 4 take away 2 is 2, minus 1 take away minus take away 1 is minus 2, and 8 take away 9 is minus 1. So the direction for how to get from A to B is by going up 2, down 2, and down 1 in the x, y, z components respectively. So our final answer now is going to look like R equals lambda A plus lambda B. A is our starting position, so we can use either of the starting positions here. I think I'll start at A and then add lambda lots of the direction vector. How did we get from A to B? Well, that was calculated before 2 minus 2 minus 1. So that's the answer to part 4a. Alternative answers could have been starting at the other location. So 4 minus 1, 8 plus, let's give it a different constant now, mu times 2 minus 2 minus 1. That would have been a perfectly acceptable answer as well. Right, question three, going back a question here now. Find a vector equation of the line which is parallel to the z-axis and passes through this point here. Well, in terms of r equals a plus lambda b, if it's parallel to the z-axis, then we want it to not go up by any x values, not go up by any y values, and go parallel to the z-axis, so go some direction along the x-axis. So the direction vector here, b, is going to be 0, 0, 1. And if we want it to start at the point 4, minus 3, 8, and move parallel to the z-axis, then it's going to have to have this vector equation here. So starting point is always put at the front, and your direction vector is always put at the back next to the lambda. OK, so there we are. That's the answer to question three then. So have a go at some of the questions from exercise 9a then. We have got another video to cover the rest of the questions from exercise 9a then. So you might want to move on to that one before having a go at the full exercise of 9a. All right. Thanks very much for watching.